Hey everybody, uh, welcome to uh, this week's uh, Design Cinema. So this is Feng Zhu again uh, with the tutorial. Um, what you see here is the image that we will be um, talking about. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say that this image is, is uh, quite high res, so you might see some Photoshop slowdowns here and there, uh, because this one took a while. This is not the typical quick paintings that I do in class, but this one took about, uh, i say about half a, half a day to paint, uh, because I was showing students, these are more senior students, so I was showing them how to uh, take a painting to a much refined level. So you can see this painting, I can zoom in uh, quite deeply. So once in a while, you'll see a Photoshop slow down because I am doing these on a the laptop um, and there's only so much RAM it can load up but anyways let's let's get started here all right so here's the image I'm gonna shut everything down like uh, you've seen before so what what this thing was about is uh, showing students basically to do a very high res image how do we start how do we add details where the priorities are you know how to use textures and all that kind of stuff so to to, to basically produce something that's uh, very printable. Something like this, you print it out, you can hold up uh, a very large scale uh, because there are projects I've worked on uh, where the directors, especially on the film side, like to print stuff very, very, very big. You know, uh, like James Cameron, for example, does that kind of stuff in the uh, Light Storm, where our designs are printed out ginormously on the pay, uh, on the on the walls. You know, they have this huge uh, Epson printer or something like that, uh, where characters are usually uh, printed one to one. So if you design a, a human character, we print that person um, the same size. That, so that way, we could walk next to our concepts and uh, and see them, almost feel like they're there in the room. But that kind of painting takes a while to do. And some of those things we're doing over there were uh, about three, four days uh, for per painting, uh, simply because the details must hold up when you blow it to one to one. So for a character, you can see everything in their clothes, uh, in their details in the face, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this demo is sort of sort of doing that kind of thing. You know, this is still only half a day, so it's definitely not as refined, but definitely a lot more um, high res than the ones uh, you've seen me do in the past. So all right, let's turn off some layers and go through this uh, one by one. So one of these days, I'll do probably a demo where I actually draw stuff in person. The reason why I don't do it is because that kind of stuff is very hard to do. It takes, a, I guess, a double pass, meaning that I have to draw something first and then record over it, like kind of, sort of like the Nomen DVDs, because to talk and then draw at the same time, a little bit more challenging or it needs editing, you know, just in case you get a phone call or the program slows down, things like that. It's not as smooth as having a Photoshop uh, PSD file like these, where I could just go through it one by one and knowing ahead of time uh, what, what's going to happen. So it's a little easier, but uh, I may I may do something live uh, for the for the next tutorial we'll see uh, depending on time so all right let's uh, let's turn off these layers and all we got is a background here's the uh, the drawing okay so this drawing was actually done a uh, quite a while uh, about almost what three four years ago you know, longer than that this is uh, 2003 so this is a uh, seven year ago I did this drawing very quick sketch you can see it's very loose um, because this is for uh, for a project that actually never came out so uh, so I figured it's dead so we could probably use it I actually modified this design a little bit the uh, previous version is actually a little bit more uh, I should say risque is a good word to put it um, but I added a lot of those things back out and there's some perspective things here uh, let me get my um, red pen here that I never resolved but it's okay I didn't have time you see here this this area here has some kind of leg thing coming out which I really don't have on this side but I figured it was okay um, for the demo because it is a soft organic creature uh, so it's not as uh, apparent when there's small and things like that uh, in there but they, th it does have perspective obviously if I draw these perspective lines through you can see oh you can see the Photoshop slowing down right here it does something like this with the horizon line being over here somewhere which is going to be the horizon line of our of our painting so perspective is key uh, in these kind of work even if it's organic doesn't matter see here's the center line so we have that once we have the perspective it's very easy to drop these things you know, these drawings into a scene because we know exactly where the horizon line sits okay, so let me take that out so for this image uh, I show the students to actually start with the background I'm doing this similar to how we do it on, um, on films where everything is going to be separated into layers let me just show you what I mean See this alien guy sits on his own layer. It's very clean except for this you know, down here you can see some leftover stuff but it's very easy to uh, clean that stuff up but this way we do this, we could extract them out. You see, here's the alien on its own layer, and then here's the background on its own layer. Uh, because often on films, and uh, even, I'm sure even on a lot of game projects and things like that, we want to keep these separate just in case there are changes, uh, or they want to extract this thing out for marketing, for example. You know, for example, you see, we can move them around. It's quite fun. So we could put them on a poster, combine them with other uh, characters. But working with a pure layer like this, where the background and the character don't interact, uh, 
as far as layers being shared, it's a little bit more difficult because you have to be careful what you're painting because you can't paint stuff where the background and the foreground kind of are merging together or you're letting certain shapes bleed out. For example, the background could be very, very dark. Uh, let me wait, let me just do a nose right here. You know, imagine this image was actually quite dark, like a dark mountain back here. And as I paint, I sort of just paint my background and foreground and these arms onto the same painting. Well, if I do that, I can't extract it out. It's going to be a lot harder. I have to go in there and kind of erase things out. So you got to be quite conscious when you're painting something where uh, the character or the vehicle needs to be extracted back out. So, all right, let's take these out. So let's start with the background. The, the colors for this background play actually came from a very small photo uh, in one of my research folders. So I just sampled the colors, uh, but all painted. This uh, tutorial, I want to show students to do it basically without any kind of photo reference at all. It's all me photo, starting with any kind of photo plates, which you've seen in the past tutorials. This one's all raw. So just started by painting some landscapes, but the colors were sampled from a photograph. This way it saves some time so we don't have to mix our own color palette. But you can see if I zoom in here, it's actually very loose. You can actually see all the Photoshop brushes. So just very quick, slap some land, but make sure the perspective is in the right place. Remember the horizon line, we kind of drew it earlier here. So the horizon line is where we um, start, boom, right there. Right, you can actually see it on the claw of this alien where the horizon line is matching up. You see, if I, if I draw these perspective lines through, on his details, you can see how they follow through and starts going into this perspective. See, like the claws down here, his teeth, his eyeballs, the uh, top of his shell here. So he has this progression going like that. Yeah. So for me, uh, knowing these perspective lines is very, very important to where to uh, basically start your drawing or painting. Okay. Next, add some clouds. Actually, did this big one here just. Uh, this cloud, though, we did it with some conscious stuff in mind. It's not just randomly painted. I want to uh, contrast this character out. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer here. Okay. So I knew that it's going to be quite dark here. So I want to create some little bit of lighter background uh, behind him, right? Uh, so it could pop this guy out. Lighter values, like these white clouds in these areas here, all this, is to serve as a contrast point later. So, and also I want to give this painting a little bit of aggression, a little bit of forward movement because this guy is moving this way, yeah? See, he's kind of hovering over this crazy landscape, uh, you know, scary alien thing. So we want to create that sense of movement. Um, so these clouds are painted in this kind of, uh, uh, what you call it, composition, you can see here. Boom, 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 okay. Let's get the alien back out of here. Some other cleanup. So you can see, I'll just zoom in here, you can see the clouds are fa fairly loosely painted. And then some atmosphere fog to add the uh, the air, you know, the oxygen, the hydrogen, all those things in the air in here. So that so we have a little bit of blue hue over the entire surface here. So you go on off. And this is actually some blue hue for the village I painted later. This this stuff down here I actually painted way later on, but I just show you guys right now. So again, hand painted, it's not from photograph, but reference from Japanese villages. I want to create kind of a Asian rice uh, area, so you can see. Um, let get a smaller brush in here. So there's some village houses here and some paddy, rice paddies and those kind of things. These buildings are here to serve as scale. So if I zoom out, you can see they're very, very small. So when I drop my alien back in here, the scale of this becomes suddenly very, very massive. Okay. So these things are basically served, served as uh, our scale tree here. And then uh, atmosphere blew very slight. You could probably barely see it in the on the video here. It's a very slight blue hue over these houses, just to merge everything together, to merge the houses, the hills, the grass, all that uh, together. Okay, so they all belong to a certain atmosphere. And that's our background play, you know. Fairly loose at this stage, but it's not our selling point. So unless we really want to go in and detail stuff out, it's good enough for us to start the, the alien drawing on top. Uh, there's actually a drop shadow here. I put it into the background, you can see here. This also comes later, right? This one's our characters uh, painted, but for now, I just leave it in there. So, and that becomes our background plate, you can see, boom, boom, very easy to uh, manipulate.